Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ. We are back for another In the Hunt episode. And check out this statue of these dragons. Absolutely beautiful. You can throw a coin in there and hopefully your retro dreams will be granted. And we're at the Osu Shopping District in Nagoya, Japan. And this area, I actually didn't see too many Western tourists here. And not that I was really looking, but um, I was kind of surprised. And I think a lot of the people that are going to be coming here, at least uh, Westerners, that kind of stick out are those that are going to be hunting for video games as there are a number of them but anyhow retro rewire game tours hit me up i'll leave a link in the description and we can get the tour going and this is our destination it's going to be super potato nagoya i've been wanting to come here for quite some time now this store you know definitely has a reputation as a tourist trap but sometimes they do have a few products that you're just not going to find anywhere else and that's right, for the next episode, we're still going to be at Super Potato. We're going to be on the second floor, and we're going to be checking out a lot of stuff that's non-Nintendo, although we will see a little bit of Nintendo goods. And this is my Instagram page. I post a lot of stuff here that's exclusive to that platform, so subscribe there if you haven't already. Let's go ahead inside. And the first thing that sticks out is not going to be the snacks. It's going to be how tight these aisles are. But let's go ahead and have a look before we dig in deep. And we're back. We're going to start with the Super Famicom games here. But before we get underway as we do, let's listen to the sweet sounds of the store. That's a beautiful thing, that. But anyhow, the Super Famicom games. Now, these are going to be pricey. So have your guess to, to ask to which one is going to be the most expensive. We have Brain Lord there, and that's a really cool cover for 16000 I recently saw that one for about 6000 at a hard off. And that's the thing. A lot of these titles you will see at book off at hard off, but you're never really going to see it in this concentration. So there's definitely some positives to shopping at a place like this. For one, a lot of the games in the case are going to be complete and book off you know sometimes it's missing the tray have you as you've seen in my videos missing the manual all banged up and whatnot sometimes it's a mangy old copy like final fight guy that that is usually missing like the cd but here as you can see it is included for twenty nine thousand four hundred and eighty. is it worth it i don't know that's definitely going to be up to you but we have a uh, dracula x there for thirty two thousand in akihabara you can find that one for as low as like twenty thousand uh up to about twenty five thousand so that's definitely gonna vary as well as online so from when i was here honestly um i was kind of like uh taking mental notes of the prices and i think this place has dethroned mandarake for the most expensive this nagoya uh chain here the super potato in nagoya definitely going to be more expensive but there is a few deals to be had and we'll see that later look at that beautiful cover to king of demons my Ma, my or something like that but a hundred a hundred and seven thousand and eight hundred yen so far that's the most expensive one that we've seen and then we have this mahjong title for uh, the same price and then we have the one with the pheasant beautiful cover there and then we have harley's humongous adventure never heard of this game never even seen this game and then the one next to it day of the idea one of the dudes in the back is just urinating there in the back that's kind of an interesting uh 
I wonder what kind of game that is. I never even even heard of this one as well. That Choplifter 3 cover was actually pretty sweet too. But let's make our way here. We have Biometal for 83,000. I have that in cart only. And I've sold a lot of my carts, as I mentioned before. But Biometal, that's one that I'm just going to keep in the cart form. We have Skyblazer. That is a pretty cool game. I used to rent that one back in the day. And then we have Kiki Kai Kai coming in at 76,000. That one's definitely definitely a pricey one i have um i have the north american version pocky and rocky then we have final fight tough which i believe is part three correct me if i'm wrong but then we have Artie lightfoot there for 76 pitfall which has a pretty cool cover we have sprig and powered and a lot of beautiful covers here with the super famicom and then we have hagane for 60,000. i picked that one up last year 2022 for 15,000 in kyushu and then we have the ninja warriors 65,000 and then we have Super Turrican and then uh, Pokonyan I believe and that's 294,000 that's going to be the most expensive Super Famicom game that at least that I saw we have Ghoul Patrol had no idea that that was released in uh, in Japan and then here are our N64 titles we have Sin and Punishment there for 20,000 and some change and that one if you look at like book off hard off it's not too difficult to find. Loose in the cart, it's about 5,000. And if you get it complete in box, it's about 15, 12. Maybe a little less, depending on where you're at. But here we go. Famicom. This is... Uh, these are going to be more expensive than the Super Famicom. Because right now, at least uh, amongst the... Uh, you know, uh, Japanese retro game enthusiast collectors, the Famicom holds the most nostalgia and it commands the highest prices but a lot of great covers here a lot of beautiful covers look at that we have dragon's lair for 54 which i believe that version is better than the super famicom version and then sword master 76,780 yen i definitely would love a copy of that then we have rockman now look at rockman the first one 38,280 yen and at hard off that's like 60,000 so something's up there I, I can't believe that it's lowered at a lower price there I recently picked that up again cart only and I picked it up for about 3,000 yen and uh, no regrets there but would I like complete of course but it's just not worth it to me and then what is this cover with that evil demonic energy for 65,000 uh, if somebody knows leave it in the comments because I would love to play something like that that was like a beautiful cover Hopefully it's not some kind of role-playing game. But here we have Harry, uh, Heavy ba Barrel for 32000 and some change. I recently saw that one at a, at a hard off, which I'll be showcasing on the channel. And it was a uh, cart only for about 6000 if I remember correctly. Then we got the Batman games. And then we have Castlevania. But next to that, we have Old Master Higgins um, for uh, 305,000 yen. So far, that's the most expensive Famicom title. But it's gonna get it's gonna get more. We're gonna go higher, because that's not enough money. We have Ducktales for eighteen thousand. That's modest in comparison to that <laughs> to that other title. But look at this: Summer Carnival '92 Reka, six hundred and sixty thousand. That's the most expensive game. Snow Bros coming in at a second in second place for four hundred and thirty-seven thousand. And then all of a sudden, Cobra Command at like fourteen thousand doesn't seem all that bad. Crisis Force. 54,000. I would definitely love a copy of that. And then we have old Bonk there for 14,000. So a lot of expensive titles, but a lot of beautiful games here. Just stuff that you don't really see. In fact, you know what? Let's take a look at some budget stuff at Super Potato. The snacks. You know, <laughs> the least expensive one here is coming in at 27,000. And out of all the retro game shops, none of them, their snacks don't compare because none of them sell snacks. Look at this, 32 yen. That's nothing. That's peanuts. And they even have this fizzy drink of Fanta Grape, 162 yen. <laughs> so let, let's go back to the games here. I just had to put that in there just because, you know, some of these uh, some of these pricing, some of the pricing here can be triggering for a few people. Um, for me, I just love seeing the games, honestly. <laughs> and uh, a lot of these games I don't want, so... And you know what? Buy, sell, trade. That's that's usually the way to do it. Build up to what you want, know what you want, and you will get what you want, you know, especially if you focus your time and energy for that. But we have Castlevania 2 there coming in at 19. And let's see, Donkey Kong. Let's go to the stacks here. 1,408. Now, and then this over, over 10,000 for Kirby 3. 
and then again for Rockman X over 10,000. Now some of these games you will find uh, in the countryside and they're going to be far far lower but I would only recommend that if you're planning to buy a lot like in bulk otherwise it's not even worth it going out to the country but then here we have Zardion an early title with the beautiful cover coming in at 4,000 and some change. Gradius 3 for 4,926 and then here we go we got some Game Boy titles. Now Game Boy you just don't see this concentration anywhere other than like a proper game shop. But like, look at this. We have Super Mario Land for 7,128 yen, 5,000 there for part two. And then Wario Land or Super Mario Land 3 for 4,000. Now those games, they're going to be under 2,000 at a book off. As well as this, 5,000. Uh, that's I believe that's like the pinball game, the Kirby pinball game. Not really sure what that one is. But a lot of these games, you know, you just have to hunt. You will find them cheaper. Bonk. This is one I have. We did see it at the pre in the previous episode, but it was uh, loose cart only. And this one, uh, before coming out to Nagoya, I hadn't even I didn't even know that it was a release for the Game Boy. But we have Nemesis, and I hear great things about this port of, of you know Gradius Nemesis. Uh, Six thousand for a Kirby Kirby's Dream Land there. And at book off, this one. It kind of ranges, you know, sometimes it's as low as like 1,500 up to like uh, 5,000. So it's kind of all over the map. And then we saw a uh, Wario Land 4 and then our Game Boy Advance titles. And that's the thing, like right now, Nintendo handhelds are just uh, crazy priced. But look at this beautiful Sansui Joy Card controller. Now, this is the Mark II version, which is even more beautiful. Look at that, 4,370. I highly recommend that thing beautiful and this is the mark one version i have the mark two version and i also have the hudson uh controller next to it and i got them in the junk section at a hard off but they're they're definitely um more beat down than what you saw there but look at this uh game boy advance game boy color game boy game boy pocket game boy light anything that's game boy is in hot demand right now and you know if you come to japan you're probably gonna buy one two or three but the prices on these things are definitely rising in value and then here's the game boy light in the box they also had them loose and the loose price is what you would expect uh is it's almost on par with what you would see at a hard off look at this coming in at seventeen thousand at hard off it's usually about 15 and it's in the same condition as that you know kind of rough but if you're into game boy be prepared to uh, there could be a little bit of disappointment, but if you spend enough time hunting, the there, there will be success. You will be happy. And look at this. The Atari Lynx, Electro Cop, Clax, and then the Legend or Zend or something. And then the actual unit coming in at 54,780. Let's have a look at hardware. Now this Atomic Purple N64 was tempting. I felt that the price was reasonable at 15000 I didn't pick it up, but it's definitely on my radar. Now look at this, the junk section, 9,900 yen for a duo in the box. But the junk section, the stuff that's here because of the place that we're at, this stuff actually does not work. And 7000 and some change there for the Mega Drive in the box. And sometimes it's, you know, repairable and you get a box out of it, most likely the manuals and all the cables. Which could be, you know, if, if you're into repairs, doing repairs, which I highly recommend. If you're if you're collecting retro, you should have some um, knowledge on how to do like basic repairs, cleaning, etc. But this could be a like a project, you know, for four thousand for the Dreamcast in the box. It could be worth it just for the box. And then we have all Metal Slug here for four thousand and some change. And then we're gonna head up the stairs which are nicely uh, decorated there. And we're going to go to like their little museum, not for sale area. Now this IBM monitor that has the Sega branding on it, no clue what it really is about, but definitely awesome to see that. Had no idea that that was, uh, that that was a thing. 
And then we have a limited ed edition Dreamcast. We have all Takahashi, a.k.a. Master Higgins there. A couple of soda pop uh, caps, bottle caps. A Game Genie and another limited edition Sega Dreamcast. So a lot of cool stuff. And then up above that, we have all these Pokemon uh, Game Boy um, editions. And all of these are not for sale, but who knows? You know, money talks. Maybe talk to the manager if you're into this stuff, but it ain't going to be cheap. And the most, one of the more interesting things here is going to be this Super Famicom bootleg cart, which is Sexual Scenes Danger. I have no idea what this could be, but it looks like the serial number is 54001. And I haven't seen that before. So that's definitely interesting, uh, especially it being on the Super Fam Famicom there. But yeah, this monitor was sweet. And then next to that, we have old Dragon Quest 3. And look at this beautiful intro. It's also awesome on the on the old Super Famicom on the remake. And then I just love seeing decor like this. Sometimes it's just worth it, even if you're not buying anything, just to experience this, the sounds. And But there is there are a few deals, and I, I will definitely show what I purchased in part two of this uh, Super Potato Nagoya saga. And they also had like a projector up and running, and they, they were playing, uh, they had a... Uh, some kind of role-playing game there. I think it was Chrono Trigger. And then right on the second floor, we have all Kirby kind of taking over things. But anyhow, guys, we're going to follow up with this episode with a lot of non-Nintendo stuff. So stay tuned, and we'll see you soon. Ciao.